Biths. Why are they brains so big? I'd like to know. Today I'll be answering that question and some others I've been wondering about Biths and they brains. Welcome to another episode of Sabak Chat. Ken, would you like to start the game? Who ever heard of a bander who didn't gamble? You know where that's from? No, where? It's from the Legends short story, We Don't Do Weddings, by Kathy Tyers. It tells the story of Fergan Dan and the model notes. That's the famous swinging Bith Cantina band. And how they came to wind up on Moe's Isley playing in the cantina. Oh, sounds interesting. Check to you. Hey, good luck. May the best man win. Does it provide any insight on why Bith's brains are so big? A bit. The narrator, Doit, says their high craniums manifest a superior evolutionary level. See, I don't like that. They think they brain so big. He's no better than you or I. Th 35. Also of interest, though, is it turns out Figrin is a gambler and Sabak is his game of choice. Well, that's awesome. Um, I'm a bit lost. I'll stand. Actually, no, it's not awesome. You see, Fagrin and the band were resident musicians at Jabba the Hutt's palace. One day they were commissioned to play at the wedding of Jabba's rival, Lady Valorum, at oh, yeah. an illegal casino, the Lucky Despot. Fagrin started gambling between sets. He lost the band's reserves, on purpose, to see the tables so he would later win. You know, like, pretend he was bad so that the others would get confidence. Right. Been there. But, Done unfortunately, that. a fight broke out between Valoran's men and Jabba's at the Sabak tables, and they were shut down before Figrin could make his money back. The band had to flee the scene, and they didn't even get paid for the gig. Huh. So, they took up playing at Chalam's Cantina. Of course, this is all non-canon, but it seems Figrin had a problem. I'll raise the 250. Seems like he neither knew his limits nor played within it. You know, you should always know your limits because otherwise you're a compulsive gambler. 250. I fold. Uh, let's do a quick checklist to see if Figrin was a compulsive gambler. What do you say? Sure, let's do it. Did Figrin ever lose time from work or school due to gambling? Did he? Mm, not exactly. He waited for the end of the set before heading to the sabak table. Okay. There is no evidence in the story that he neglected his duties with the band. Right. Did Figrin use money to gamble with that he shouldn't? Well, yeah. He used the band's reserves. Then he continued to gamble even after the band was flat broke and he needed to get off Tatooine in a desperate way. You see, Jabba was mad at them for abandoning their contract. Broke, they had no money to get off planet. What does Figrin do? He plays the back with Han Solo and he loses. Okay, so that's a yes. Did Figrin ever so experience... So one thing I can say is that he exhibited physical symptoms when he wanted to gamble. He starts sweating, he leans forward, he talks about gambling aggressively. Okay, let's stick with the list for now. Okay. Did Figrin ever experience trouble sleeping because of gambling? Uh... Not in the book. Actually, I think I've covered everything. It's only a 15-page read. Right. Well, canon or not, Figrin, I salute you. Wherever you may be. Unknown where he is. Nothing in canon explains what happened to the nodes after their appearance in A New Hope. Yeah, that's troubling because one item on my list here says, Has he considered suicide or self-harm as a result of gambling? Really? You're folding? So you think he blew up his head with ultrasonic frequency? That's the thing that happens to Bits. You know, like, near the end of Kingsman Secret Service? Yeah. That's what happens to Bits, or so I've heard. Yeah, that's from Knights of the Old Republic, too. Oh, that reminds me. Heads. That reminds me. Uh, heads up! <laughs> uh. I made us delicious, salacious bee crumb cakes. Care for a crumb cake? Is that salacious crumb? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah. please. A pair of idiots for a pair of idiots. I'm putting mine in a sabac pot. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway, I think the reason Bits' brains are so big is because Lucas wanted a funky costume for the band. 
The bits look like the Roswell aliens, except maybe taller. They look like the classic aliens of film. Usually those aliens were either hostile or suspected of being hostile towards humans. And the nodes are obviously not hostile. In fact, they're quite servile. Hmm. Playing instruments for people on a bar. Kind of a role reversal. Interesting. Could Biss be ancestors of the Roswell aliens? E.T. species was seen in episode one. I call. Well, Biths are a very old species, according to Wikipedia, so it makes sense they survive into the distant future. I better check in this case. It also makes sense that their brains would be so big, having much more time to evolve. That's called encephalization. On that subject, looking at encephalization theory, the size of a Bith brains does in fact relate to its intelligence. I better check. Have you heard of the encephalization quotient, or EQ? developed by H.J. Jerison. It's basically a ratio arrived at figuring the mass of a creature's brains in relation to its body mass. The theory goes that you can estimate relative intelligence by figuring the ratio of a brain's to body weight and the ratio compared to the mean, or expected value, of a similar species. Uh, just 45. The human brains, for example, are large in relation to the human body if you compare them to a chimpanzee's brains in relation to its body. Humans have an EQ of roughly 7.44, dolphins 4.14, and so on. A horse has 0 0.9 because it has small brains in relation to its body. 0 0.9, that's its midichlorian count? No, that's its brains to body ratios divergence from the mean. It provides a relatively accurate scale of their intelligence. If you figure the brains of a human have the same size neural cells of the brains of... Okay, you're starting to sound like a zombie. Brains. <laughs> no need to pluralize. One brain each. Uh, that's 255. I say brains. It's not plural. It's just the substance of a brain. Like foodstuffs? Foodstuffs. In this case for zombies. I'm, I'm going to fold. You're playing a conservative game. The zombie is getting me. Yeah, I'm playing a conservative game. I had 15. Kiati Mundi species, the Syrians, have two brains each. Did you know that? No. And they take multiple wives because males are scarce on their planet. Multiple wives? Do they have multiple dicks as well? One dick to govern each brain? <laughs> two brains. That must be how they come up with this. Males are scarce <laughs> shtick. They think they dicks so big. <laughs> um, if they have multiple brains each, how do you explain this scene? My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. Uh, Check out the big brain on bread! Not only are the Sith not extinct, but they are a major existential threat to the Jedi. Keanu Monday poops the bed with that comment, in my opinion. The guy has about three lines. Bet 50. He has about three or four lines in the entire trilogy, and he finds a way to make himself look ignorant? Call 50. Which brain is he using when he makes that comment, eh? Which? Oh, stay. Neither, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, neither. Look at this back shift. Shift. Got shift here. Yeah, he's not using either of his brains. Because he gets killed because he thought the Sith were so dang impossible. It just drives me crazy, the ignorance. So... Should we calculate the encephalization quotient of a Bith's brain? We could judge its intelligence that way. Okay. Well, we could. It would be one of the nerdier things that a person could do. Okay, sweet. Let's do it. Let's do it. Grab a calculator. I keep mine right here. Okay, you at home, follow along. Grab your calculators. Help us calculate the encephalization quotient of a Bith's brain. Check to you. The formula for EQ is E equals C times S to the power of R, where E is the weight of the brain, C is the cephalization factor. We'll figure that out and divide by 0 0.12. 12? Don't tell me you drew 12. No, that's the mean ratio for higher vertebrates. Oh. S is the body okay, weight. Okay, because you have the 11 hanging out there. That'd be bad for me. Uh, R is the explanation. R is the exponential constant for primates, which is 0 0.2. Wait, 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 wait. Are we sure bits are primates? I don't think they are, mm. necessarily. 
I'll bet 50. Well, there's another exponential constant for mammals. Call 50. That's 0 0.66. Okay, they're mammals. I'll give you that. So the EQ... They are mammals. Mm, yes. So the EQ is the ratio of C, the cephalization factor, over the average or expected body weight. So we need to plug in what numbers we know and see if we can solve for C. Then we can find out where this species falls in relation to humans and other species. Let's look at E, the weight of the brain. Do you have any guess? The average human brain is three pounds. I'd say Biff's maybe 25 pounds. Just a guess. Um, I'll bet 75. 25 pounds? Well, that's, that's way too high. No, it's got to be less than that. 225. Wow, you're really loosening up your play. No, uh, the only reason I say that is because the new essential guide to alien species says, quote, their tall craniums house immensely oversized brains. It also has a scale by which to measure them. Uh, here it is. Unfortunately, the myth is sitting down in this picture. Would it please stand up? I fold. What good is a seated position next to a scale? Well, we can see its head in relation to the scale. Yeah, I'd estimate true. closer to nine pounds, but let's use the scale as best we can to measure the cranium, and we can probably get pretty close. The U.S. National Library of Medicine has a formula where one can determine the weight of the brain in a living person by taking measurements of the skull. It's proven to be accurate within 1% of actual brain weight. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. I, I don't want to hazard a wild guess, right? We have a range here between 9 and 25 pounds so far. Looks like here's the formula. Okay. Here's your cards. Good you. luck. You too. Looks like the first thing we need is the axial circumference. Let's go to our scale. Okay. Scale shows... Okay, so this is 250 centimeters. Let's say 300 centimeters half axial circumference to be safe. Okay. Times two is 600 centimeters. Let's go 600 centimeters. Okay. okay. And I'll check. What's next? Next is the transversal circumference. Bet. Okay, 600 centimeters circumference as a reference. Transversal circumference looks to be about 825 centimeters. Let's grab the sagittal while we're doing it. And I'll call 60, by the way. Why not? No, I know. We don't need it for our formula, but the sagittal is 850 centimeters. It's useless. The sagittal is useless. I'm just, what's the length? Well, we're here. Length, 295. Okay, now shift. The width? Width, 185. Okay, let's plug those into the formula. Okay, wow, this is going to be a huge number. 138,537.87 grams. Convert that to pounds by dividing it by 453.592. It's 305.4. That's a 300 pound brain. Mm, I'm gonna bet. Uh, what, did we do it right? 350. Yeah, the, the formula works. I actually tried it on myself the other day. My brain weight was 4.73 pounds. That's higher than average, but that makes sense, right? I think the new essential guide must be wrong here with their scale. That's a ridiculous weight. It's like having a refrigerator on your head. As long as the beer is cold. <laughs> you bet 350? Uh, take it. Nice bluff. Thanks. I had seven. Uh, I don't know, it might not be as crazy as all that. Even just looking at the scale, without making any assumptions about the circumferences, it's over 250 centimeters across. That's a big head. I don't think the scale is inaccurate. I think Biff's heads are this big. Look at these the bits. The bits from the cantina weren't that big. Yeah, but look at these bits. There's different species of bits. There's Yabif, their product of mutation. That's canon. Look at these bits from the Clone Wars. Their heads are clearly much larger. Okay, let's go with that then. I guess the guy would know. They bothered to put the scale in. Let's figure 305.4 pounds into our cephalization formula. Right. 305.4 pounds equals C times S, the body weight, 
uh, yeah. average body weight of a bith is why well, I'd say the same as an average human accounting for the the difference in brain weight yeah a hundred times the brain weight. Right. I agree I'd say the bodies are in proportion to the humans action on you oh let's see what I have here the average adult human weighs approximately 137 pounds 137 plus the brain weight 297 right we subtract three um, in brain that's 434 so the average weight of adult bith 434 pounds and make that 200 total great I'll call 200 now we can solve for our cephalization factor 434 to the power of 0 0.66 is 55.048 Okay. C equals 305.4 divided by 55.048, which equals 5.547. That's our cephalization factor for bits. Okay. okay, great. Now let's compare it to the mammalian mean of 0 0.12. 0 0.12, right, you said. Yeah. And we get 46.225. That's quite intelligent. I'm impressed. Again, humans are just 7.44 as a higher estimate, and dogs are... 1.2 bits 46.2 wow yeah boss nas was right when he said and i quote we don't like the naboo they think they brain is so big the naboo are humans and therefore they have miniature brains they shouldn't be leading the gungans or anybody to believe that they have big brains just meet a bith and then they'll know uh, 450. So this old guy, CEO Bobble, looks pretty smart. Keeping in mind that Natalie Portman of humans is relatively intelligent, I can see why she might think she was greater than the Gungans. She went to Harvard. She may have went to Harvard, but that doesn't mean that Queen Amidala did. I'm going to call you. But I feel like you're going to Alderaan. Amidala needed the Gungans in the end, don't forget. She said, we are your humble servant. Uh, I don't think Portman would have ever lowered herself like that. And yeah, you're right, Alderaan. She would never have needed to. She went to Harvard. She would have just gotten along with the Gungans in the first place. All right, what to do here, what to do. Okay, I'm going to draw. Okay. I say I draw. So uh, do you want to do it face up, make sure. it more exciting? Yeah. All right. What do you have? I bet. I'm, I'm going to say you. I bet you have either 21 or 22. Uh, 17, actually. 17? Yeah. Oh, I can't believe I drew... Oh. Okay, I have 18. Uh, <laughs> Probably going to bomb out. You could still take it, though. You just need between 0 and 5, right? Uh, negative 1 would be a sudden demise. All right, here goes. 8. Bomb out. Uh, yes! I got it. Please pay 10% into the sabac plot. Yeah, yeah, I know how to play. <laughs> uh, folks, what do you think? Why are Bith's brains so big? Did you draw a different conclusion than us? Let us know in the comments below. You know, I don't think you made a bad choice there. I would have drawn on 18 as well. I lost everything. Maybe you gamble, my friend. <laughs>